Okay, so today we're going to have a look at how to export videos out of Photoshop. Um, again, there are a couple of ways of doing this and it depends uh, what you're doing. But um, first I would just like to start with uh, showing you another way of import animations which uh, I forgot to mention in my last video. So I'm going to show you this very quickly. You can import a video um, <clears throat> inside the frame uh, animation timeline by going to uh, using the import uh, option here video frames to layers that's interesting because this way you're not importing a video into a video layer but you are importing a video into separate full um, layers so that means every frame of the video will be turned into a layer so potentially you will be creating a lot of layers but let's have a quick look I'm going to click on that so I've got this um, WMV files file for example you could use a um, QuickTime again, um, AVIs, uh, MPEG4s, um, all, all sorts of files. Uh, this one contains uh, 32 pictures, um, so let's open it and see what happens. Um, so here you go, you have here um, the choice to uh, import everything from beginning to end. Um, and here you have your footage, and these two little uh, knob. Uh, little handles here allow you to basically define where you start importing and where you stop importing so as soon as I move these ones it's changed here to selected range only or can go back to from beginning to end you can also limit to every two frames or, or the value but that allows you to only import uh, um, a certain percentage of the frames so that you don't have to too many layers um, and here you have make frame animation if you don't click this um, the frames will be important just as separate layers and that's it if you if you let leave it uh, clicked on then it will generate a frame timeline down there so it will be a playable movie right away uh, so I'm gonna keep that on I'm gonna select everything go OK so here you go it's working and here we are we have tons of layers on the left here actually 32 so that's okay it's reasonable 32 frames as well and uh, if I go back to the beginning and start click play here you go it's playing so there, there you are there you have it so I'm going to stop this actually I'm going to stay here I'm going to show you how to export this now because that's what this video is about so uh, let's let's do that There's two, there are two ways to export uh, you can just use export here um, render video or you could use as an alternative save for web option the save for web option will allow you to export as a gif file but that's all just just for gif files um, or also jpegs etc but it's essentially uh, if you want to export an animation through this option it will only be a gif animation but let's try this one first let's try a render video see what options we have so here you choose a name first here it's a Quick time by uh, that's just the last settings that I had, uh, but you can select the folder where it's going to be uh, saved. Uh, you can create a new subfolder here if you wanted to add a subfolder. And here in this area here, you will choose the format that you're exporting into. Uh, here it's set on Adobe Media Encoder. And basically, you have a choice on the first one, Adobe Media Encoder, which will create movies or you could use Photoshop image sequence which will allow you to export as PNG sequence or image sequences uh, I'm going to stay on this for the moment and let's have a look at what we have here we have a format QuickTime uh, you could use the DPX or H264 when it comes to animation I personally like to export in format, for, QuickTime format um, and use animation of high quality that gives you uh, just a good um, a good output a good quality with no compression or very little and um, so if you have to export things over and over and modify the files you won't have uh, too many errors accumulating so this this is a it's also a good format to export to your clients or things like that uh, here you could choose by default the document size or you could choose some uh, preset of different um, cinema formats um, the document frame rate, you can use document frame rate. Uh, in this particular case, the document frame rate it makes no sense because we are in a frame uh, animation timeline. It has no specific frame rate. Every uh, Each frame has its own duration. 
So here really it says it says 30 frames per second by default, but really actually um, it's up to you. So let's say if I said um, 10 frames per second, then it would change here to 10 frames per second. Uh, <clears throat> then you have um, this field there. Um, it says here the field order. For those who don't know, this comes from the time when, well, actually it's still a case, from um, when videos were interlaced and you, you could choose progressive to show um, all the fields or to show only the upper first or the lower first. But by default, we'll just leave preset progressive. That's, that's what you want most of the time. Uh, the aspect is the aspect ratio of the pixels. Um, if you, well, unless you, if you, if you know what these are, then you know how to use them. If you don't know what they are, then just ignore them because you want to keep, uh, you want to keep it at one. Color manage. Um, if you're using a, a color, uh, some specific palette with um, Photoshop, you might want to click that on. Here you would choose uh, which range you're exporting. Uh, here you can see it says currently selected frames. So you can actually select frames before you go to this panel, and then this will be available. I'll just show you quickly. I'm going to close this. Let's say I select here from here to here. So I've got these from four to nine selected. I'm going to go to File, Export again, Render Video, and here it's gone and chosen currently selected frames. But if you're not happy with that, you can just go back to All Frames. And here it's quite important if you are using uh, if you are using a trans transparency, like if you have, for example, a transparent background, you may want to make to make sure that your alpha channel is set to straight and matted. That means that you will actually have a transparency. If you put None will have no transparency. Pre-multiplied with black will mean that the transparency will be replaced by a black value, here a white value, or a specific color. But just um, go to straight, unmatted, and you will be good. And here you have 3D um, quality um, settings for those who do 3D, uh, but I don't particularly. So, so here we go. Once you've done that, you can hit render, and um, your film will be rendered. So um, I won't do that here, no need for this. So um, so that was the first way of exporting a video. Now the other way is uh, save for web. So let's have a look at that. So this is essentially for people who want to make GIF animations. So it's busy calculating as you can see, and that's because it has to transform all my images into um, a GIF animation. So it takes some time. And there are quite a few settings you can choose. So you see my GIF is quite big here. So um, if I don't want it to be that this big, I can make it smaller here by choosing changing the size, either by defining the number of pixels or defining a percentage. So let's say I go for a size of 20%. So I'm going to hit Enter. And now it has to calculate. It has to generate uh, every frame again. So it takes a bit of time, but there we go. We have it. If you want to play it, see what it looks like, you just hit here and you get it. So it's playing a bit slow. It always does when you do that. Uh, it's fine because actually at least what you, what, you, what you actually want to do is look at the quality of your render. This is the original on the left and this is the new one on the right. Um, if you're happy with it, then you can export. But here are some settings here on the right hand side that you can change depending on what if you want to change the quality. Here, I've got a number of colors set to 250 colors. So here in this square here, you can see it selects all these colors to give you the best result, best output it can. I could reuse this to, let's say, 16 colors. So now it's only set 16 colors. It hasn't changed much on this side, but you can see here maybe that the, the gray here on the, on the chest is slightly different. If I reduce it to, let's say, four colors, now it's starting to look quite ugly. And if you have an animation with lots of different colors, well, you, you'll need more, more of those. So what is this changing? Well, what it is changing really is that is the final size of your GIF. Here you have a, it tells you how, how big your GIF is going to be. Here it says 300, 300 kilobytes. Uh, if I reduce this to four colors, it's only 40, 87 kilobytes. So you see, it makes a significant difference. So it depends how if you if you're happy to have a big file or if you want a smaller file. Um, so here I'm on a GIF um, uh, tab, but you, you could change that to JPEG, PNG. But these are not animations. The only the GIF is animated. 
here you've got different um, let's say uh, solutions to um, to render the in the colors that you basically if you have a gradient of color you've got many colors because you have a, a reduced palette it tries to uh, approximate the right color by using different uh, solutions you can, so you can try these and see if the result is better uh, by default I really prefer by far the adaptive one so uh, once I've used I've tried them all I decided that adaptive was definitely the best and then you can use pattern or um, noise or diffuse I would avoid using no noise uh, I would avoid using no data either but uh, between diffusion and pattern diffusion is actually gives you a better result it looks nicer but pattern really saves in terms of um, um, size of the file so if you are really if you don't if your GIF is looking a bit big you might want to use pattern uh, but if you're happy for to have a big file you might use just diffusion I most of the time use pattern because I still find that the outcome is quite nice it, it, it gives you sometimes feeling that uh, patterns appear on your uh, GIF but um, eh, that's that's the price to pay for something small and easy to export here you can click on transparency so if you have a transparent background let's say you can uh, unclick or click the transparency so that means that one of the colors here will be used for transparency value uh, you can also do the transparency but to be honest it rarely gives a really good result because you only are, it's only a one on or off value so uh, it's transparent or not as that means the dither is going to be quite visible uh, the interlaced uh, I never tried that to be honest I don't know what too much what that is um, and that's about it. That's 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 the main important thing. Um, you could try playing around with those things, but um, um, to be honest, I think I personally, that this is definitely the setting I prefer using adaptive pattern. I I may change those depending on how many colors I have in my animation. And here we go. And then you hit save, and you can set and you can give it a name, and you you're good to go. You create your GIF. So there you go. This is how you create. Um, this is how you create animations and GIFs straight out of Photoshop. I hope this was helpful. Thank, thanks for watching. Till next time.